If you're an audio developer, there's some fantastic news that has just been announced that has a large impact on our industry. Last week, Steinberg made two massive announcements that fundamentally changed the landscape for anyone building audio plugins, DAWs, or audio tools. On October 15th, they opened up ASIO to dual licensing with GPL v3, and on October 20th, they relicensed VST3 as open source MIT. This is great news for the audio programming community, and today I want to walk you through what happened, why it matters, and what it means for your projects going forward. First, let me give you some context. VST, which stands for Virtual Studio Technology, has been the dominant plugin format since Steinberg released it way back in 1996. It became the standard because it was simple to develop for, cross-platform, and filled a huge need at exactly the right time. However, over the years, the licensing became increasingly complex. Under this old system, if you wanted to distribute a VST3 plugin, even freeware, you had to sign a proprietary license agreement with Steinberg. For indie developers and open source projects, this created some friction. It wasn't a huge barrier, but it was overhead that added complexity. At the time, VST3 offered two licensing paths, and neither was ideal for everyone. You could use the proprietary Steinberg license, which required that signed agreement and had redistribution restrictions, or you could use GPL3. But GPL3 meant your entire plugin had to be open source. If you had proprietary DSP code that you wanted to protect, GPL3 wasn't an option. Some developers were concerned that this proprietary license owned by one company could have its terms changed at any point in time. ASIO had some similar challenges. For those who might not work on Windows much, ASIO is absolutely critical for real-time audio performance on that platform. It's the difference between usable latency and, well, not very usable latency. Steinberg created it in 1997 to bypass the Windows audio stack and give direct hardware access. But some saw the licensing as restrictive. You needed to contact Steinberg directly for the SDK. There were disclosure restrictions, and crucially, it was completely incompatible with open source software. This meant amazing open source projects like OBS Studio, Audacity, Surge XT, and others couldn't natively support ASIO without jumping through hoops. And now, here's where the story gets interesting. In 2022, Bitwig, Yuhi, along with a cohort of independent developers, released CLAP, which stands for the Clever Audio Plugin Format. And CLAP was MIT licensed from day one. This wasn't created with the intention of competing with VST, but rather the result of feedback that developers wanted a modern plugin format that wasn't controlled by a single company with licensing restrictions. CLAP brought some genuinely innovative features as well, including modern threading, polyphonic modulation and MIDI 2.0 support. CLAP's existence was a great demonstration that an open standard could gain real traction. Major DAWs started adding CLAP support and developers have started shipping CLAP versions of their plugins. Which brings us back to the announcements. First, on October 15th, Steinberg announced that ASIO was moving to dual licensing. You can now use either their traditional proprietary license or GPL v3. At the same time, they became a diamond tier sponsor of OBS Studio and OBS announced that they'll be adding native ASIO support. This doesn't currently change licensing for closed source developers. However, it opens open source projects to use ASIO. Then, five days later, on October 20th, the big one. Steinberg opened VST3 to MIT licensing. The old proprietary license and GPL3 options are gone. For anyone who is unfamiliar with licensing models, MIT is one of the most permissive open source licenses out there. You can use it in commercial products, closed source products, open source products, whatever you need. The only requirement is keeping the MIT license text with the code and you're good to go. This is huge and exactly what the developer community has been hoping for. So let's talk about practically what this means for your work. First, if you want to develop VST3 plugins, no more signing license agreements. You can just download the SDK and start building right away. Want to release a free plugin? Go ahead. Open source your entire project on GitHub? Absolutely. For open source projects, this is transformative. You can now fully integrate VST3 and ASIO support without any licensing conflicts. Projects that previously had to use wrappers or workarounds can now go native. And the entire landscape of open source audio tools just got a massive upgrade in compatibility. This is beneficial for commercial developers as well and removes any legal uncertainty. You can rest assured knowing that you're building on top of an open source standard with unchanging licensing terms. 
And here's something that's really exciting. This makes VST3 a truly viable standard for academic and research projects. Universities can now use it freely. Research papers can publish VST3-based implementations, and students can learn using the professional standards right from the start. The ASIO change is equally as important for Windows open source developers. Open source projects can now integrate ASIO for proper low latency audio support. The OBS partnership proves that this is real. One of the most used pieces of software in the streaming world is now getting native ASIO support because of this licensing update. But beyond the immediate practical benefits, I think this signals something really important about the evolution of our industry. Standards are increasingly being built with an open source mindset, and this is a positive contributor for the sustainability of this industry, for education, improvement, and transparency. So kudos to Steinberg for this new approach. This also sets a precedent. With major players like Steinberg embracing truly open source licensing, it makes it easier for others to do the same. It normalizes the idea that the foundational standards of our industry should be accessible to everyone. And also, we need to tip our hat to the team behind CLAP for blazing the trail on this. They showed that this open source model can work and were one of the first to applaud this bold move from Steinberg. We're also seeing convergence around best practices. CLAP was MIT from the start, and now VST3 is MIT. These formats will coexist. Developers can use both without friction, and users will now get more options. This sounds like a win for all sides. So where do I see things going from here? First, I hope to see a new explosion of VST3 and open source ASIO based projects. Open source DAWs can now compete on equal footing with the commercial options and experimental research projects can now use the professional grade tools. I also think that this makes our entire industry even more accessible to newcomers. This removes licensing ambiguity and makes the path clear, especially for VST3. You can just download the SDK, read the MIT license, and start building right away. That's going to bring a lot more people into our community, which benefits us all. And honestly, I'm just excited about what this represents. This is the audio development community at its best, recognizing that collaboration and openness makes everyone stronger. Steinberg deserves the real credit for making these changes, and I'm thankful to see this new approach. If you found this video to be helpful, give us a like and subscribe to The Audio Programmer to keep up with the latest on audio software development. Until then, happy coding, and I'll see you on the next one.